Hi, this is a video overview of the Scenes unit, uh, or section of the, our Animator 3D Modeling unit in TIJ. And it goes something like this. What we want to do is we would like to take our model and add a background to it and create a scene. So I'm going to jump on over to Animator right now. And I've got my model. It's looking fine. This is the way we modeled it. It's time to go over from Mode Object to Mode Scene. Scene is where you have a virtual studio, and this is sort of like the floor of our virtual studio. Now, there's nothing in the studio just yet, so I'm going to go and build something in there by adding an object. And the object that I want to add is going to be my flying saucer. All the objects show up if you've named them appropriately. It makes life easy. There it is. There's my saucer. The first step that I think I'm going to do to this is I'm going to jump on over to Quad View by hitting the period key on my keyboard. I can now see this from the front, the right, the top, and from a camera view. Camera view, by the way, is button number one. Uh, button number three is perspective. Camera shows you what it looks like from this virtual camera that actually shows up right here. And the next thing that we really should do is uh, set up some things and get a background happening in there. So we're going to go to a scene and we're going to go to its properties and we're going to go to the environment. Uh, you can name the scene right now, by the way. I'm going to make this thing look like it's flying, so I'm going to call this scene flying. Might as well do that now. And I'll hit my environment, and instead of using a solid gray background that you see there in the camera, I'm going to change it to an image. And I'm going to go to File and load up the image that I want. Now, finding an image that you want, my suggestion would be, if you're in your TIJ folder, uh, I hope you downloaded the shortcuts to handouts. If you didn't, you can go the long way through Docs, or John McRae Docs. But I'm going to go to Handouts, and inside of Handouts, there's nothing there in the TIJ, but if you take a step back, you'll see you have access to all sorts of other assets that I've compiled for you. We're going to look for images, specifically digital photos of the school. That might work well. And if you want a sneak preview of how these things are going to look, I'm going to change this to medium icons. And maybe I can get an idea of what these pictures are going to look like. So I got something that's going to look okay if I took a picture of the front of the school. I'm going to grab this one here, double-click it, and it's going to load it in. Now when I say okay, you're going to notice that ground grid is going to be in the way. I just want to point out ground grid is right here and can be toggled off. So I'm going to say okay now and show you what it looks like if you don't toggle it off. The ground grid obscures your background. So if you have to fix that, just go back to Scene, Properties, Environment, and turn off your ground grid. Just like that, and say OK. Say OK, and now you see your saucer in the scene. Now, it looks awkward right now. It doesn't look like it's been posed. It's kind of like someone walking into a studio and not knowing which way to face. So let's get this thing facing the right direction, and having quad view makes this pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to hit F so I can see all the, the parts that I need to. And the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make that saucer bigger. And remember, we have all the regular tools over here, so if I collect, click this object, and if I find this scale tool, I can make this thing as big as I need to. I'm going to make it about that big. Okay, certainly going to look better on screen. Next thing you might notice is the aspect ratio of what we're looking at here in the camera view. It's defaulting to 4 by 3. Let's go fix that under Scene Properties. And we'll go down to Movie Image. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to change the settings of this thing so it matches a, sort of a high def look, a 720p look. First, I'm going to go down to the aspect ratio and change it to 16 by 9. That's the right aspect ratio. And I've got a preset here for 1280 by 720. That's 720p. And that's about the size of the assignment that we're going to be doing today. And by doing that and saying OK, you can see it's now given it a widescreen aspect ratio. And that might change what you're going to do with the, um, the camera and the angles and stuff. I'm going to start by taking this camera. And I'm going to move this camera. I am tapping A to select it and M to move it just so I can move it off to the side. I'm going to tap R to rotate it, and I'm using the right mouse button, R for right, R for rotate, so that I can rotate it something like this. You get an idea of what's happening in the real view here. This camera from up here, I'm going to go back to M for move, and drift it down here a little bit, R for rotate, right mouse click and rotate it back like this. This camera is clearly too close to the, to the saucer, so I'm going to move it back. I just want to kind of fill the frame a little bit with this. Just something like that. Whoops. Now, if you drag off the screen, it snaps it back into place. So when you're moving, you don't actually have to click on the object. You can just click anywhere inside there. 
move mode's not going to change. And I would suggest when you frame this thing, just like photography, frame it for something of a close-up that it fills the frame and occupies at least two-thirds of the frame width or height or whatever. Now you can get more interesting with this than this. You can now go back to clicking A and selecting the saucer. And you could rotate the saucer a little bit. You could give it a little bit of a tilt if you wanted to, if you went to the top view and I rotate it a little bit like this. And you might decide, you know what, that thing's a little bit too close still, so I'm going to move it back just a little bit. The idea is you want to feature the work. Remember your uh, composition rules, you want to give it sort of a little nose room that's going on there. But this might be the shot that I want to take of this thing, so I'm going to move it as close as I can. Note that if you go too close, it's going to start slicing into the objects, and we don't want that. So let's put it right about there, so it sort of features it as best we can. And that is basically setting up a scene. Um, get used to using three-dimensional space, and remember to use the quad view. It makes life way easier. Okay, we'll see you in part two when we're going to set some lights up.